Um, our next speaker here is Achillea Psilidis um, from Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands. And he today is going to be talking about unlabeled and mislabeled POIs, the challenge of classifying urban places. Great. Awesome. Well, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon from the Netherlands. Uh, thank you very much for having me. So in the next 15 minutes or so, uh, we'll be talking about one of the major challenges that we're facing now that we indeed have a lot of POIs out there. But one of the main problems that we face is that many of these POIs uh, seem to be um, unlabeled, especially in terms of their categories, whether they're like theaters, hotels, or restaurants, retail, et cetera, or they even have like mislabeled um, uh, category annotations. So we see also inconsistencies across the sources. And that, of course, is really um, challenging. It makes it really challenging when we want to classify and categorize places and in location and analysis, for instance, uh, that we want to perform when it comes to like land use planning, etc. So let me uh, just illustrate this with one of the many examples out there. And I use just a single POI from the Netherlands here that's in Amsterdam and it's called the Rachort Kerk. And if I believe Foursquare, then this place is a bar. If, or is it maybe an arts organization as Google Places claims, or is it perhaps a church as its name suggests because Kirk is Dutch for church? So what is it? out of all of them. And of course, when it comes to a single POI, that's that's an easy thing. But when we want to scale up these processes and when we want to automate the, the analysis that we perform and we want to perform that like at city scale, then it becomes a little bit challenging in terms of like what this place actually is and what kind of activities people perform there. So let me show you what kind of opportunities do we have nowadays in this regard. So category aside, if even if this is like a little bit of a question mark, now there is a great opportunity in the sense that POIs nowadays come with a lot of other attributes with them. And here I'm listening, um, I'm presenting an educative list of these, some of these attributes. Of course, we do not find all these attributes across different sources. Most of the times we have to combine many different sources to um, collect all these attributes and sometimes others are missing. Um, so we could use these additional, let's say, attributes to find out what kind of a place we're actually talking about. And this, of course, a typical classification problem. There is nothing new there. But one of the questions that arises is that let's suppose that we have all these attributes at our disposal, that we have all these features. Are they all equally descriptive and indicative of what this place actually is. And if this is not the case, let's say, uh, are there some of them that are a little bit more descriptive than others, for instance, in terms of like what type of activities people perform there, what is this place actually about? So and this would have an implication in terms of like maybe targeting specific attributes when we don't have at our disposal all these attributes and features um, together, maybe we need to be targeting specific attributes in order to find out really what a place is. But then, of course, there is a question in terms of like, is it the same for different POI categories? So is, is it like the same? Does it perform like the same when it comes to uh, categorizing a theater as a theater or uh, finding out that the place is a retail store, for instance? And does context play a role? So does where the POI uh, uh, located play a role uh, in this uh, classification? So with my talk today, I will try to address and, and give briefly like an answer to uh, actually these questions that I just uh, mentioned. And this mainly is based on a recent study, empirical study that I performed together with one of my PhD students that I happily see that he's also here, like in the audience. Um, and in this study, what we did is that we uh, collected several uh, features from several different sources. First of all, we um, classified, we grouped these uh, features into different um, uh, sets. 
So we identified features from like, uh, you know, opening hours or closing times, whether they have websites or visiting hours. Um, then there are other feature sets that refer mostly to what kind of things people say around the POIs, similar to what, for instance, uh, Ian Jay was uh, uh, referring to in his presentation with topic, with topics that people talk about. And that is like, because we know that it might be that even if we don't know the category of a place, it might be that what people are talking about surrounding that area, it might be an indication of what these uh, place might be. And of course, like data from reviews, like ratings, likes, and, uh, and other attributes, but also visual features, like morphological features, like architectural features from facade elements, et cetera, that, that might give away of what a POI might be, given the, the specific elements that they are there. And last but not least, a few of what I call here neighborhood-based features, and that mostly derives from like location theory, as we know, because in some categories, we know that some uh, places tend to cluster more as opposed to others, for instance. That, I mean, it's more likely that next to a retail store, we also find a retail store, but this might not be the case, for instance, for like theaters, uh, for example. And, and that derives from there, and that's why uh, it's also included here. So in order to perform like this study, in order to assess uh, how much different elements, different features could influence the classification results. Well, we performed two studies like in two cities in Europe, one in Amsterdam and the other one in like Athens, Greece, not Athens, Georgia. Uh, and we collected um, uh, POIs from Google Places and Foursquare in total around 110,000 POIs in the beginning. And of course, due to the fact that of course the labeling has uh, um, it's my major and like argument here is like that they are not fully matching together. The first step is that we needed to match the different taxonomies also that the sources are using and make sure that one place that is in one source is actually the exact same place like in the other source. So that was like on one of the major steps there to match the POIs from Google Places and Foursquare. And after this has been done, then the resulting uh, matched POIs, which is like a much lower number uh, than the initial one of the collected um, POIs, then we started by collecting tweets uh, around this location to uh, extract the topics that I referred to, so what the people are talking about around each POI, but also street level imagery um, from um, the uh, the POIs themselves and the surrounding, let's say, buildings, the uh, building establishments. And, and that happened only for the matched POI. So from this, we extracted like topics from the Twitter data, all the other features, like the, the ones that are time related, the ones that I mentioned here as operation based, others that refer to like reviews, the ratings, the likes, and of course the type of POIs that are in the neighborhood and other visual features from street level imagery. And with this one, then there was a classification problem. And there, because of the fact that if you remember like the main questions that I posed, there was a thing of like, okay, do they all contribute the same? That's one thing. So we did that with a multi-class classification. So from a given set of POIs, identifying what type of category uh, an unlabeled POI or perhaps mislabeled POI might be. And on the other hand, a binary classification, finding out, for instance, if a POI represents a retail store or not. So as simple as that, to find out and to break down whether specific features contribute a little bit more for specific categories of POIs as uh, opposed to others, for instance. Now, there was an initial assessment. I will spare you from the technical details and the numbers and the likes. I will share the paper like at the end of this presentation. So if you want to delve into the details, feel free to do so. And I'm happy to also answer any questions in this regard. Um, so the multi-class classification finds out, let's say, what features contribute to the category prediction. And it seemed like consistently uh, throughout that features that relate to time um, aspects like the opening times or the closing times were the most descriptive ones in finding out what a POI actually is, whether it is, we're talking about a theater or a hotel, for instance, or a cafe. 
Um, and that was followed by um, topic based features. Of course, in all occasions, like when we had multiple features together and we combined them, we achieved the best results. But the main goal here is to also identify in the cases where we don't really have like all these features available, are there specific ones that we might need to target? And that seemed to be like a little bit consistent across the cases, uh, even though we might see a little bit of the differences, like some small fluctuations in terms of like which specific category was best predicted by the algorithms in the different cities. So clothing stores like retail stores were the best predicted ones in Amsterdam and uh, hotels were the best predicted ones in like in Athens, Greece. The problem was with like the coffee shops and the problem here is mostly because I mean, the, the labels are somewhat confusing sometimes. I mean, they're labeled as like coffee shops or bars or like, I mean, there are multiple words and, and it might be, and they seem to be uh, similar. So it didn't perform very well in terms of like this category, but consistently, despite the fluctuation, time related aspects were the ones that contributed like the most, were the most descriptive ones in terms of what a POI actually is. And we see here like a first like ranking of the multi-class classification where we see that, you know, uh, popular times uh, or opening times and the topics that are discussed around the POIs are the ones that rank like the highest uh, in the classification. And at the lower level, we see like more um, of visual, uh, let's say POI, uh, visual features uh, contributing to that. Um, but that is like for the first one, uh, that is in order to identify whether um, specific features contribute more to describing what a place actually is. But then of course there is a question that I mentioned also previously, is it the same for different POI categories or do we have specific features that tend to work best for certain categories like cafes for instance? Now. For this one, in order to solve it, we perform a binary POI classification, and then that we define whether a POI belongs to a certain category or not. So is it a theater or not? Uh, we studied the three best predicted categories. That's hotel, clothing store, and restaurant, as I showed like before. And here, uh, actually, it's also very consistent across the, the, the different um, uh, use cases that time-based features, operation features, temporal features tend to um, be the most contributing ones or the most descriptive ones. But in this case, there was also another interesting result that there were feature sets, specific ones, that they contributed more for specific POI categories. So for instance, like topic-related features or neighborhood-related features. So what kind of POIs are in the immediate vicinity of, of the POI at hand? They tend to contribute more for specific categories like hotels, but this wasn't the case for other categories like the restaurants, which means that it seems that um, even though the time related aspects, let's say, are the time related features are the ones that are consistently uh, the best performing ones, it seems that depending on the category of the POI, we might have some of them that better define the category, this category itself. And you see here an overview of the ranking of the individual features from the binary classification in the two cases in Amsterdam and Athens, Greece, where you see that, for instance, in this case, in clothing stores, for instance, in Amsterdam, the first feature that comes like in the ranking is like the number of nearby clothing stores. So that's exactly as expected from location theory and all the empirical studies that existed like before that we know that retail stores usually cluster together because of whatever exogenous or endogenous kind of externalities uh, that exist. But this is not the case for every like category. So we see here that even though the neighborhood based features in the overall classification did not perform very well, they do perform very well. They rank very high. So they are quite descriptive of certain POI categories. Uh, and that is also the case here, like with hotels, we see that it's mostly like temporal uh, hours, which is like also the overall. Now, if you want to uh, find out all the details and you want to delve all the, into all the technicalities, uh, this is the article that has been recently published in Computers, Environments and Urban Systems. And I include here like the, um, uh, the link. Um, so to summarize, just a few key away POI. Means um, is that 
it seems that out of all the features that are there and that we might have at our disposal, when the category itself is a little bit of a question mark, whether it's unlabeled or mislabeled, then it seems that other features relating to time aspects like opening and closing times, et cetera, they uh, seem to be the best predictive ones or the most contributing to finding out what a place actually is, and that's followed by user-generated uh, topics. Now, the um, influence of the neighborhoods, so the spatial configuration of neighboring POIs, seems to be uh, particularly important for specific types of POIs, like retail stores. And as I said, that's pretty much expected from what we know uh, from land use and location theory. And in all cases, when we have multiple features, the combinations, of course, contributed to the classification results to an improvement by an approximate 19%. Now, a few things for the discussion maybe later on, so we'll not delve into the details, just throwing it on the table. Uh, I would say that we're, we're currently at a very good stage when it comes to POI availability. That wouldn't have been the case if I was talking like a few years like ago or maybe some decades ago. This is not a problem anymore. However, inconsistencies seem to be uh, a problem and they might remain a problem in the near future. And I see as a kind of research opportunities now that we have like these very detailed information that we can revisit location theories, the classical location land use theories, and we could actually study exposures of people to certain activities, like where people perform actually use these places uh, that they uh, that these POIs represent. And this is extremely important in applications for like physical and mental health, where we need to know just not just like the distance, but that we make use of specific amenities. And I was very happy to hear something like that. Uh, I think it was Florina's talk from uh, the lightning talks. So with this one, I would like to thank you very much.